Albert Pike is probably one of the most colorful Masonic figures in the 19th century, and one of the most controversial. From his first use of Lucifer, the light bearer in Morals and Dogma, to being accused of forming the KKK after the American Civil War. Albert Pike was born in Boston in 1809, and he later moved to Arkansas where he joined the U.S. Army. He served as captain and fought in the Mexican-American War. Politically active, he actually voted against secession and wanted to take a more compromising view. However, when the first shots were fired, he joined the Confederate States Army and quickly became a brigadier general. At the conclusion of the American Civil War, he was imprisoned and later released when Andrew Johnson became president. Johnson was also a Freemason. So yeah, they look out for their own, that's for sure. During his lifetime, he was an avid Mason and prolific writer. Albert Pike became the Grand Sovereign Commander of the Scottish Rite's Southern Jurisdiction in 1869 and served until his death. He is also credited with spreading Scottish Rite Freemasonry across North America. Albert Pike died in Washington, D.C. in 1891. Pike is the only Confederate to have a statue in the Capitol to this day. Well, actually, the statue was torn down during the riots of 2020. So, there's that. One of the most controversial theories about Albert Pike surrounds a letter he supposedly wrote to Giuseppe Mazzini, the Italian revolutionary, on August 15, 1871. Giuseppe Mazzini was a founding member of the Mafia and widely considered to be in the Illuminati. The letter, apparently, was held in the British Museum Library, according to William Guy Carr, a former British intelligence agent. This guy, William Carr, wrote a book in 1925, based on a different book by Cardinal Caro E. Rodriguez of Santiago, Chile entitled The Mystery of Freemasonry Unveiled, which was also written in 1925. So, according to William Carr and Cardinal Caro, the letter was a description of a vision that Albert Pike had, and it showed how the three world wars had been planned for many generations. Again, this was supposedly written in 1871, and I quote, The First World War must be brought about in order to permit the Illuminati to overthrow the power of the Tsars in Russia, and of making that country a fortress of atheistic communism. The divergences caused by the agents of the Illuminati between the British and Germanic empires will be used to foment this war. At the end of the war, communism will be built and used to destroy the other governments and to weaken religion. So, did you get that one right? Well, students of history will recognize that the political alliances of England on one side and Germany on the other, forged between 1871 and 1898 by Otto von Bismarck, were instrumental in bringing about the First World War. So, pretty good, pretty good. So let's move on to the second one. And I quote again, The Second World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences between the fascists and the political Zionists. This war must be brought about so that Nazism is destroyed and that the political Zionism will be strong enough to institute a sovereign state of Israel in Palestine. During the Second World War, international communism must be strong enough in order to balance Christendom, which would then be restrained and held in check, until the time came when we would need it for the final social cataclysm." End of quote. So let's check and see how close he was on that one. After the Second World War, communism was in fact strong enough to begin taking over weaker governments. In 1945, at the Potsdam Conference between Truman, Churchill, and Stalin, a large portion of Europe was simply handed over to Russia. And on the other side of the world, the aftermath of the war with Japan helped to sweep the tide of communism into China. So, I guess he was pretty close on that one too. But let's get to the Third World War. And I quote, The Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agents of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. This war must be conducted in such a way that Islam and political Zionism mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economic exhaustion. They go on to say, and I quote again, We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm, in which all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, the origin of savagery, and the most bloody turmoil. Then, everywhere, the citizens, obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries, will exterminate those destroyers of civilization, 
and then the multitude of masses, disillusioned with Christianity, whose deistic spirits will, from that moment on, be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal, but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought finally out into public view. This manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement, which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. So let's check and see how close he was on that one. And so to a lot of people, the use of the word Illuminati is highly suspect. The Illuminati, or the Bavarian Illuminati, as it is also known, was the brainchild of Adam Weishaupt, who himself was a Freemason. Well, it was formed in 1776, and it took many of its precepts from Freemasonry. At its zenith, the organization had as many as 2,500 members. But by 1790, it had conflicts with the Prussian Rosicrucians. And by 1800, this group was banned by many European countries and eventually closed its doors during the anti-Masonic sediment of the 1820s and the 1830s. So, I suppose most people dismiss this because they assume that in 1871, when Pike's letter was purportedly written, well, they assume that the Illuminati did not exist anymore. Or perhaps the Illuminati just receded into the shadows. Just because they were banned and officially disbanded didn't mean they really disbanded. And of course, many people just assume that they merged with the Freemasons, as Adam Weishaupt was a Freemason. So, again, I have no idea. <laughs> it sounds to me like this group was receiving some heat and just went underground. And on top of that, it does make their little club a little bit more exclusive, doesn't it? I would imagine that was a huge marketing success for them. After all, getting banned by governments just adds to your underground street cred, no doubt, right? However, that's neither here nor there. Another inconsistency is the use of the word Zionism and Nazism. The use of the word Zionism did not take place until after Pike's death, and Nazism was not used until the 1920s. Also, Muslims were often referred to as Mohammedans, and the term Islam was not in the common vernacular. So there's a few questions we have to ask. Let's just assume that Albert Pike did not write this letter, and it was just conceived of by those two other guys in 1925, the ones who were investigating Freemasonry. Well, if that's the case, how could both William Carr and Cardinal Caro see into the future? In 1925, there was no indication that the State of Israel would be formed after World War II, or that there would even be a World War II. It's going to be another 20 years before that unfolded. So, how did they know? How did they know that communism would be a major player, when it was only in existence in Argarian circles in 1925? How did they know in 1925 that Nazism would later come to power in Germany? And finally, how did they know that Islam would rise to its current levels? Who knows? To me, it's just something interesting to think about. And let me know what you think too. All I know is that more than likely, the end of the world is going to come from the hands of humans, either out of greed, bloodlust, a quest for power, or perhaps as some misguided attempt to fulfill religious prophecy. Do I believe any of this? Again, I have no idea. I am far more worried about crazy people doing crazy things rather than this true fate. In my humble opinion, our end is not written and it does not have to go this way. Once again, this is Helio Wave. If you like the content, like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video if you want to. If you're in a position to, consider subscribing on Locals or Subscribestar. As always, make sure you disobey those true fascistas, and yes, I do hope you have a good night.